Hey, what's up you guys? So, I kind of realized I've never really done a life explanation video and I kind of think that I should because a lot of stuff has happened and <laughs> it's made me who I am and I want to show who I am on this channel. Basically, I just want to really explain like the last year. So, but I am gonna say a little backstory first. So, I was born, 2004, great, perfect. Um, I had four people in my immediate family, me, my brother, my mom, my dad, my dad had a huge, huge struggle raising us because he kind of had to do it alone. He had my mom, but she, she was addicted to opiates. She has been since she was like 21. So she, my dad kind of had to raise us on his own. And then when I was seven, turning eight, in 2012, he passed away. Um, and then after that, my brother was sent off to the state. He is very autistic, like high spectrum autism. And my mom couldn't take care of him. So he was sent to the state and my family kind of didn't want to do with him. So he's off he went to the state and I didn't have communication with him for seven years on the other hand I stayed with my mom for seven years and a seven to 14 year old raising in like was trying to raise herself I was like literally raising myself because my mom couldn't she couldn't she couldn't take care of herself so I spent a lot of my time looking after her and or staying in my room I got very depressed um, I remember there were days where she'd be downstairs and like would take would have taken a lot of sleep meds and then she would couldn't move she was like in the kitchen make some, making something and couldn't move. So I'd have to drag her upstairs. And there were a couple times where she would have fallen out of bed or something, or at least that's what I thought. I don't know. But she'd have like black eyes and a tattered up face and would be like out of it. Like completely out of it. And I'd have to. Like, she was, like, limp, and I had to, like, get her back into bed. And it was so scary, because I couldn't. And then I, when I finally got her up there, I was, like, relieved. And there were points where I was so mad at her. And I kind of regret that. But, um, that was when I was around 14, I would like to say, yeah. But, um, back when I was 10, she overdosed. Um, I found her in her room, she vomited, I cleaned it up, she wasn't waking up, so I called the cops. The cops took her, and then I went with my uncle and aunt for a month, and then they sent me to my grandparents. And then I saw my mom out of the hospital um, a couple months later, I want to say, and it, it was really nice because I missed her. But um, there was one time where she was in a mental ward. And I was like 10, so I couldn't see her, and I was so angry. But um, uh, after two years, when I was 12, she got custody of me. She got custody back. So I went back to live at the house, but she was still addicted. So she went through all that, and yeah. And then fast forward to the end of 2018, November. Um, she did the opposite of overdose 
she um i can't think of the word right now Ugh. she did the opposite of overdose so you know um damn it it's weird um and i'll think of, oh she withdrawed that's what she did she withdrawed from meds it was clonopin which is very dangerous um so yeah she was withdrawing from her meds and going psychotic she was she's been withdrawing for a couple days at this point went completely psychotic it was two or three in the morning and um i was trying to just do work i guess and then she came down screaming at me like screaming at me accusing me of murdering people which i didn't and she'd go back upstairs and scream again like she was talking to someone there was no one there and then um she came downstairs again, accused me of murdering someone, saying she was going to kick me out, and then took my phone and blanket and stuff. So I went back upstairs to check on her, I guess, and get my blanket back, and I was, like, scream crying because she was screaming at me, and I'm like, I don't know what I did. Like, I was like, ugh, it was so terrible. But then I went up to check on her, and she was in a very bad state. And she was, like, literally shaking and crying, and I was, like, afraid to hug her, which sucks <laughs> i kind of hate myself for it but i was like so afraid to hug her be near her because i didn't know what to do and then that morning though i went to school with my some of my stuff and then i came back that afternoon and she locked me out so and then i went to stay at my grandparents and then i went back and i was still locked out so i told my school and then I got taken into DCF custody in, I want to say around November 28th or something like that, November 25th, something like that. But, um, yeah, I was in DCF custody and I got taken to a foster home for a night. That didn't last. I only ended up staying, um, a day. So then I had to go back to the DCF office again and wait. So I did, and then I got placed in this foster home. We had our first court date and it didn't look promising. So I was like, okay, this might take a while. And then fast forward to January. There was a point in time where she wasn't going to our visitations anymore and I was getting really worried, but I couldn't do anything. And then January 28th, 2019, I get told that she passed away from committing suicide while I was in foster care and I couldn't do anything about it. And um, I just feel so terrible about it. But um, yeah, that happened and um, I was devastated. I was like devastated. And then the foster home that I was in wasn't working out. So I told my DCF person I wanted to switch. So I switched. And then I went to another foster home in West Haven, I want to say. And um, it was like horrible. It was so horrible. Like one of the girls there um, I kind of got into some trouble with her. I shouldn't have gone with her with what she was doing, but I did. So I kind of screwed myself over. I didn't get into any legal trouble, thank God. But yeah, I did that with her. And um, during that time, I was cutting. <laughs> Extremely suicidal. I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And then finally, in April, I got out and I went to live with my aunt. Thank God, she literally saved me. She saved my life. Um, my mom's side of the family wouldn't take me. It's whatever, I have someone. So I'm extremely grateful. Some people have no one, but um, yeah. But honestly, it's made me the person I am today, so I couldn't, I couldn't take that back, you know. But, um, I do, I kind of do want to say a message with this too. 
if you're someone who is dealing with someone who's addicted to opiates, um, prescription drugs like Adderall, Vyvanse, any of that stuff, like anything for ADHD, any prescription stuff, honestly any street stuff like crack, cocaine, heroin, any of it. If you know someone, you're not alone. You're not. I promise you are not alone. And if they won't help themselves, you cannot help them. You can't. They need to help themselves. Yes, you can baker act someone. That's like kind of the only way <laughs> to take away all their rights and kind of force them. But if you yourself are struggling with addiction and you want help, you'll get it. Just keep pushing and fighting. Because I promise you there are people who care. Even when there seems to not be, there are people who care. And I also wanted to say, for anyone that I've fucked over and anyone I've hurt, and anyone I have screwed up mentally or messed up or done something to, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Especially anyone I kind of screwed over when I was in like third, fourth, fifth grade. I'm sorry. At that time, this is not an excuse, but at that time, I was on heavy, heavy doses of prescription drugs and I was not myself. I'm very sorry. And I didn't mean it. I really didn't mean it. And um, I hope you can forgive me. But if you can't, that's okay. I get it. I understand. But I just, honestly, at this point, I just want peace and love for everyone. Like, I don't wish any will ill intent towards anyone and i'm not gonna edit this video i'm not because i don't want it to seem ungenuine because everything i've said is genuine and i just want people to know that you know i don't i don't want pity i just wanted to tell my story so you guys could get to know me more and if i could help anyone so yeah i hope i did and I hope you guys have a great day. I will be coming back with a better, less depressing video soon. All right, I love you guys, bye.